the most important thing anybody, but in particular a creative, can have is a voice. You know, I can walk into a, a Michael Mann or a Wes Anderson movie late, and, I, and I'm like, is this Wes Anderson? I can, you, you, you know what a Wes Anderson voice is. I was going to do the math. It says 55 million hours watched. So that's like, say, 27 million people watched the full two hour movie, right? Mm -hmm. Cut that in half. And average movie ticket, $9. You would have had a $243 million opening weekend. Yeah, and, that, and <laughs> it, it would have actually been more than that. Because I'm serious. We did, I did this math because every. You did the math too. This is, this is 55 million hours, meaning they count that came out to like, that's per house, that's a household, right? So yeah. I think they said it was like 32 million households at the end of the three days watched it, right? A household, oh. everybody has five Netflix accounts. Mm -hmm. So they say we count two. Yeah. So if you count two, it was 64 million households watched it at $10 a ticket. That's like- Avatar. Yes, you know, something crazy. <laughs> With that being said, even if only 10% of that went, it still would have been a $100 yeah, million yeah. weekend. So I do think the box office will come back. I think that levity is important. I think letting people take in important messages and laugh at the same time is really something that um, I've been really lucky enough to do. I do think sometimes our stories, we feel like they have to have race in them. And I think that's, it's tiring at a certain point. I enjoy, I enjoy it for me, but I think the next generation, like we, we at a certain point, we have to evolve. I think it starts with budgets first. That was one of the things for you people, for me, why I was really excited about it. My ideal thing is if I, if I take a show out, you know, and it sells, and, and you know, that we have the same budget, that we get the same, you know, back-end deal, that we get the same, so, so to me, that's the way that we really find parity. The most important thing anybody, but in particular a creative, can have is a voice. You know, I can walk into a, a Michael Mann or a Wes Anderson movie late, and, I, and I'm like, is this Wes Anderson? I can, you, you know what a Wes Anderson voice is. Blackish allowed me to sort of find my voice, and my voice really was sort of just be sincere and talk about the things that people are talking about at home a little bit afraid to talk about, but yeah. like, how do you say it in a way that doesn't feel ostracizing. Every episode of Blackish, we kind of did a thesis paper. Yeah. And it was like, you've, you know, you form a hypothesis and then you try to prove or disprove it through, in the episode. We had as many different characters with different points of view that would give different ideas. And by the end of it, the audience sort of can make their own decision. You know, and I think that was a real big lesson to me, I think, to not be preachy. The two people in a room that people hate the most is Dog with a bone and logic police. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Logic police, I get. What, what's dog with a bone? <laughs> dog with a bone is like someone who has an idea. They pitch it out. It's heard. They pitch it again. <laughs> oh, I saying? guess. I Five guess. minutes later, then they're like, seven minutes later, you hear it pitched again. It, you know, you're like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but I think ultimately the writer's room is a sacred place because people have to feel really comfortable in what they talk about and what they're saying in that room. Because people oftentimes are talking about their family, talking about their kids, their, their marriages, their, you know, their traumas, their childhood. You want that, like you're encouraging that. That's, what you, that's how the stories are told. A writer's room is a lot like an orchestra. Um, and you have these amazing musicians around you. Yeah. And your job is to bring out the most from your cellist, bring out the most from your flautist, bring out the most. And like, you know, it, you have to let them play, but it has to be filtered through your, you know, conduction. You know? And I kind of think that is the job of a, the best way I can sort of explain what a showrunner does.